Hi friends, my name is Al or Little Star, and welcome to another video in my 12 Days of Christmas series. I'm so happy to have you back here. I hope your holidays are going really great. If you don't celebrate anything, I hope you're just having a great time in general. Today on this fine day, I will be walking you through all of my favorite or most used art supplies. This is actually a video that I have made before. It's still up on the channel. It's an older-ish video, but it's still out there. It's still available. And I, despite that, I get comments very frequently asking uh, to make this video about specific supplies, where I can find these supplies. So while, frankly, a lot of the information in that old video holds up, not many of the supplies have changed, uh, I thought I would make it again because people still ask about it all the time. I mean, literally today, like an hour ago, I got a comment asking like, hey, where can I find, re like I literally have a master doc of all of my supplies and links to them in that old video, but I, I still get asked. So I figured I may as well make a new video so it's more fresh in people's mind in people's subscription boxes on my page so it's easier to find. And also frankly, like I said, the, the information mostly holds up. There are some differences in supplies, but also like the vibes are just wrong in that video. Like the vibes have evolved. I have evolved, equipment has evolved, and so I just wanted a more updated version. So I've got all the supplies laid out here. I've got them grouped in an order that makes sense to me. And yeah, we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna see what happens. Linked in the description will be one, some affiliate links for some of these supplies if I have an affiliate link for it. So if you like wanna get it, um, you can buy it through my link and then I get some money from that. And also there will be a master doc of probably mostly Amazon links to as many of these items as I could possibly find. If it is purchasable somewhere, I will have a link for it in that master doc. It'll just be like a Google doc or whatever um, if you want to look at that. Before we get started, I do want to thank my patrons. Your names are on screen. Thank you so much for supporting me. It means the world to me. I have been having so much fun with my patrons this year. Uh, it was a goal for me this year and it's going really well and I'm so appreciative. If you would like to support me a little bit further, that's a great way to do it. I have options from $1 YouTube memberships all the way up to like $50 uh, original pieces every month on Patreon. I believe there is a $5, $10, $20, and $50 tiers on Patreon. Patreon. Um, all of them have different stuff, podcasts, exclusive videos, fiscal rewards. So if you're interested, go check it out. Now, without further ado, let's get into the art supplies. So we're going to start off with drawing surfaces. If you have been here for more than five seconds, you know that my favorite sketchbook is the Strathmore Mixed Media Series 500 floppy soft cover. I literally have a full video <laughs> doing an in-depth review of this sketchbook, why I think it's like one of the best sketchbooks out there. I genuinely love it. I also usually have a trash sketchbook alongside my real sketchbook that I keep at the same time. And it's literally just any old notebook. This is not, I don't even know what brand this is. It's just whatever sketchbook is given to me at Christmas time. Um, it's just super cheap and horrible quality paper. And I just use it to like sketch out ideas and write notes to myself. Then we have my favorite paper of all time. This is what I do most of my finished pieces on. It is the Canson watercolor paper. I have it in multiple sizes. And listen, I get flack for this. People will be like, warning, don't use it with your markers. It'll dry out your mark. I use this with every medium, including markers, and I've never had any issues. I'm not saying that you won't have issues, and I'm not saying that I know better than other people, but I'm saying I've done it for literally years and I've never had any problems, and maybe you're just a coward. I'm kidding, I'm totally kidding. You probably should not use markers with this, but I do and it's fine. Finally, when it comes to finished paintings, um, my preference is gesso board. I like the textured kind. It's kind of like grainy, but there's also the smooth kind, which is a little harder to paint on, but is also very pretty. It is a solid, flat, hard surface. Um, and I just much prefer that to canvas. Although canvas is another popular use for me just because it's cheaper to get on a large scale. So that's that. Next up is sketching supplies. Now I am a huge fan of just using whatever gets the job done. I'm not necessarily big on brand names or having the right kind of supply. Uh, frankly, if, it's, if it works, I'll use it. It really doesn't have have to be fancy or expensive. For example, when it comes to pencils, I just use the regular old Bic mechanical pencils or literally whatever mechanical pencils I find on the ground around the house. If you know I pick it up, I'll use it if it works. Especially back in college, the amount of writing utensils that I just like acquired. I have no idea where they came from, how I came to have them, but I used them all the time. I never had to buy my own stuff. If it writes, I'll use it, it's fine. Like I don't, I have a set of like graphite pencils. I'm not even gonna show them to you because I don't use them most of the time. I'm just gonna use mechanical pencils. Uh, for most of my sketching, I get this question a lot. What do I use to like do my red sketches? I just use red graining pencils. Here I do actually have the, I think it's, it doesn't have a label. I think it's the Prismacolor Colorace red pencil. 
These are more expensive and in my opinion, honestly don't work as well as what I use, which is the Ticonderoga Erasable Carmine Red Grading Pencil. You can find them in bulk online for super cheap. It's literally the same thing, but it's a little bit softer so you don't make as hard of lines and the eraser works better. Then I love random pens, same thing as pencils. If I pick it up and it works, you know, I'm keeping it. There were so many pencils over the years that I found that I just love the texture of, but they were like school pens, pens or something like they had the school logo on it. So they weren't like things that I could buy. But there are two that over the years I keep coming back to. I've bought in bulk and I love them so much. It is a blue pilot, easy touch, fine ballpoint pen. I love these things. It's what I do so much sketching with. And then the big round stick, medium <laughs> black ballpoint pen. I don't know. This is not ballpoint, but pen. Uh, I also love this. They have very different feels. So kind of depending on what kind of art I want to do or what I'm craving, either one of these is going to like satisfy that. I love them. They're my go-tos. I love sketching with both of these. I also need to point out highlighters. I love highlighters. I think they're such a fun pop to your sketchbook. People sleep on office supplies, sticky notes, washi tape, stuff like that. Use those in your sketchbook, utilize whatever you have. Um, but particularly, I really like the crayon ones. I think they're so fun and they feel so yummy. Um, pencil sharpener, right now I'm currently using a Stedler one and it's good, it's fine. It's twice the amount as my regular one. I couldn't find it at the store, which is the like green Prisma color one. And I swear by that one. This one's also fine. In this disgusting bag, <laughs> it looks so nasty. It's just a needed eraser. It's just one that I got for super cheap at Michael's. I don't care about brand, but I do recommend having one on hand if you are someone who uses pencil a lot. This has definitely been good for me. I see some people like replace their regular eraser with these. I would never, which leads me to my regular eraser. This is just a plain white one. I don't know eraser brands. I just get the white ones. I don't like the yellow crumbly ones. Those are disgusting. But any of them that feel like the smooth, soft rubber, like pink erasers, like I like that kind. They're usually cheap and easy to find at any hobby or art store. So have at it. So those are all my sketching supplies. Now we're going to talk about pens stuff pens pens obviously we have the basic microns in the other video that i did showing all of my supplies i got a lot of feedback that these are not like sustainable or good for the environment which frankly i don't know anything about like i've never heard of that until i got that feedback and honestly i haven't looked into it because i have not really needed to purchase any fine liners since then so i cannot speak to that subject but i will say they have a great array of sizes colors and they perform really well i like them another option that i do like are the Ohu fine liners. They are not quite as black, I will say, but they also have a really wide range of sizes and they also perform well. But my favorite fine liners uh, are the Lousy Ink fine liners. These were gifted to me forever ago and I have just continued to be impressed by them. These are made in Australia. Unfortunately, they only come in three sizes, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, and 0 0.3, I believe. I hope they expand their sizes because they are beautiful ink. They're the blackest ink I've seen. They stand up to a race much better than any other fine liner. And they are incredibly environmentally friendly. I don't remember all the information off the top of my head, but if you're interested, you can check out their website. They're like made from 100% recycled plastic and they have this like ink reusing system. I think they use like printer cartridge ink. It's really, really cool. Very eco-friendly and sustainable, which obviously is a bonus. And I have a, a decent amount of these. And that's that's why I said I like haven't looked into microns because I haven't needed to buy any because I've had these. So I, I really don't know much about anything else because I've just had these on hand. Um, and I would probably continue to buy them, especially if they come out with more sizes. I also have these Pilot V-Ball Pure Liquid Ink Pens. Um, I think I found these either in an art hobby store at my college or on the Mossery website, but these are amazing. These are some of the most gorgeous, gorgeous pens I've ever used in my entire life. The ink flow, the feel, they're so juicy, but so controlled and like thin. I love it. I mainly <laughs> preserve these for a long time for signatures on originals and stuff, but lately I've been getting into like the past year or so, I've been letting myself draw with them more often because they just feel so yummy and I love them. I have them in blue and black and they're just, they're gorgeous. Oh, they're in 0.5 size 0.5. They're so yummy. Then I have Pigma brush pens in fine, medium, and bold. And these are a staple. I don't use them as much anymore, but I like there's something that I've repeatedly bought throughout the years. Every time my old ones dry out, I get a new one. Like since I've been doing art regularly. Um, they're just really nice to have around. I like the feel of them. Uh, I use them for pretty specific things. Like I'm going to draw with them and usually not with any other supply. So they're not like my most frequently used, but I can't think of anything else that would replace these. 
bodies. Then I have Pantel art brushes. These are, I love them, but they're really hard to use. Like I am really bad at getting the ink to flow well. I don't know if you're supposed to squeeze, but they usually, the brush will usually dry out for me pretty fast. I have it in red and black. I love them. Again, it's one of those things that like, I use it for one specific kind of thing. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like a fun, cool supply to have lying around. Then we have these brush sign pens from who? From who? I think these might be Pentel, but they're brush sign pens. And I love these little guys. These definitely came from the Mossery website, but you can find them other places too. They come in really fun colors and I love drawing with them. I love the lines they make. They're thin, but bold. They don't waver in like opacity at all. So you're gonna get one thick line. And I just, I really love the look of it. Very fun to draw with. Um, I eat these guys up. I love them so much. I at first only had two of those and I was trying to find them, but I couldn't really find where to buy them. And so I was trying to find something that would replicate them. And I got these water-based ink classic felt pens from Arteza and they are different, but I love them as well. These are pretty much exactly what they say they are. They're pretty thick tipped. I mean, they're thin, they're pointed, but they're thicker than kind of I had expected. The package comes in a nice array of colors and they're really fun for just doodling and kind of scribbling. Another supply that I wouldn't necessarily consider a staple, but something that I definitely love having around and I have a definite use for. That wraps up all the pen stuff. Now we're gonna talk about color pencils, but I only have two brands. We have the obvious Prismacolor. I haven't used too many color pencils in my life. Um, I've used a couple of different brands and all of the top ones, like I've tried Winsor Newton, all of them are fine. Like they all work well, but my go-to is definitely Prismacolor. And that's frankly just because that's the one that I have the biggest set of. But I also do love the way they perform. I think they, they work really well. And I like the color options. I especially love their neons. However, another uh, player has entered the game. I have a small collection, I think maybe 12 of the Holbein pastel colored pencils. And ever since I mixed my brands and put all of the same supplies into one spot. I have started using these way more often and I am finding myself reaching for these every single time I use colored pencils. They're so buttery. I love the way they feel. They're very opaque. The color options are amazing. So Holbein colored pencils are definitely things that I will be looking into building my collection of. I really like them. And those are my only <laughs> colored pencils. Now we'll really quickly talk about markers. This is also pretty straightforward. So we have the obvious Copics. Um, Copics are my go-to for like professional level stuff, things like commissions. And I'm sure like most artists, it's like the dream, right? To like, have all of the Copics, but I will say they're expensive and they're not always really accessible for people. And I always try to preserve them for my like more professional artwork. And so I was always looking for a cheaper alternative and I found one and that cheaper alternative has really replaced Copics almost entirely for me. And that is of course Ohu markers. I think in my other video, I hadn't tried Ohu's yet. I have been using Ohu for a very long time now and I absolutely adore them. They truly are, I think the best alcohol markers out there. I actually also have an affiliate for Ohu. So if you, if you want some, use my affiliate link. But I genuinely really, really like these markers. Um, great color options. The sets that they come in, the different sizes, I think they all have great options, different, plenty of different like barrel options and tip options. They last really well, beautiful colors. They blend beautifully. They, I think they directly compete with Copics. Like they are directly up there. And then I always, I feel guilty if I don't mention these. I used to love touch twin markers. Frankly, I would still be buying these if it weren't for the fact that I have, I cannot find them anywhere. They are not accessible to me and they have not been since I left my college town. If they are accessible to you, I would recommend trying them out. They actually are pretty expensive. I think they are cheaper than Copics, but they're not like the cheapest option out there. But I genuinely miss, but I do genuinely miss the way my art used to look when I used these. I love the colors. I love the way they blend. I think they're really, really pretty markers and I miss being able to use them. But those are all my recommendations for markers. Now we're going to move on to paints. First, we'll talk about watercolors. I really like the Winsor & Newton Travel Palette. I think this was like $30 and it's lasted me a really long time. So I would say it's worth $30, but I also don't use it that, there's one blue in here that I love, but I don't use it that often anymore. And that's just because it's, I've, I don't know, I'm out of that phase, but I still really like it. What's kind of replaced it as my go-to uh, is this Paul Rubens palette. And that's solely because I love how many color options there are. Like that's why it's replaced the other one is the other one I think only had like 10 to 12 color options. And I just really like the array of colors here. It's got great saturation. They look really nice. Um, I definitely like them and I think they're pretty. I also used to use an oval prong palette um, and that's like a super cheap option. It's like $16. So if you are looking for like a super cheap option, I would recommend that. I think they performed well enough. Like if you're someone who never uses watercolor, but maybe you want it for like the tw twice a year, you, you you use them like that, that would be a good option for you. And then of course I can't not mention my Paul Rubens Artist Watercolor 2 
tube set. These are gorgeous. I've used them a few times, but I literally, I don't wanna use them too often because I just wanna preserve them, but they're so beautiful. Color selection, gorgeous, performance, out of this world, I love them. I really like that they're tubes. I like having a tube and a pan option for like most things. I like having different options for all of my supplies. I also have to mention my Da Vinci watercolor palette. This is Denise's Embrace Opacity palette. She sent it to me and I tried out in a video and I just think it's so cool and interesting and it's like something a little different. So of course I have to mention that. And then I do have these two specialty palettes here that aren't like, I don't use them every single time, but I have loved having them. Like these are things that like I wouldn't buy right away, but as I've gone through my career, they're things that I love having around. Does that make sense? The first is this Maz Art Como Rebi watercolor paint set. It's the neons, it's got six neon colors. And if you know me, you know that I love neons. So I had to have a watercolor version. And then this is a entirely brandless um, selection of golds and pearlescents. Just something that I found was like kind of handy to have. Okay, boom, on to gouache. So my number one gouache option, uh, hands down, undefeated, absolute top tier is the Holbein Artist Gouache. I have been loving this for years. It was the first gouache I think I ever properly used and I there's no turning back. Like I genuinely, honest to God, don't think anything compares to these. They're just so gorgeous. Color selection, beautiful. Um, Holbein, please send me every single tube option that you have. I, I'll love you forever. Second best option for acrylic is the Holbein Acrylic Gouache. I love the way these perform. It's gouache, but you can't reactivate them. Um, However, these are pretty decently expensive per tube. People act like these are so cheap. I don't know if it's just where I live. These are not cheap, but um, again, gorgeous, gorgeous color selection, gorgeous performance. Truly, these are amazing. Another good option that I've tried, and I haven't tried like every gouache tube out there. These are just the ones that I've tried and have had good experiences with. Another would be Windsor and Newton gouache. I really like the performance of these. I just happen to have bad tube colors because I didn't think hard enough when I picked them out. But these are objectively good quality. And I've heard some people say that these compare to Holbein Artist gouache. Um, in their opinion. I disagree on that, but I think these are also really good and cheaper options. Speaking of cheaper options, I have two, three options for like really cheap versions of gouache. So if you're kind of starting out, you want to be introduced to the medium or you don't use it that often, whatever. Gouache is something that's really tricky to get a cheap version of because sometimes cheap gouache doesn't even work like gouache. So if you're looking for a tube, which frankly, I used to love the jelly pots, which we'll talk about in a second, but I'm over that phase. I still think that they're good and they're worth recommending, but I definitely would suggest tubes. If you're going for gouache, I would suggest tubes no matter what, but especially if you're not going to use them frequently. So Arteza gouache tubes are really good. I will say they're right on the verge of not being gouache. So I've noticed that they take more layers. Like I'll do my first layer and I'll be like, this is disgusting. These look so bad. These perform so terribly. But once I get into my second, third, fourth layers and I've got more paint on the page, they start performing exactly the way they, that I expect them to and they look a lot better. So I will just give that as my warning for these. They're not the best quality. Obviously it's Arteza. They're very, very cheap. But if you're kind of new to the medium, you're figuring stuff out, I would recommend them. And I like having them around as a sketchbook option. Obviously my other things that I just mentioned, they're expensive and I have limited quantities. So I I like having these cheaper options to use for low pressure stuff in my sketchbook to mess around with and waste. So I would recommend Arteza for something like that. And then there's Jelly Gouache. In my last art supplies video, I could not recommend these enough. I spoke so highly of them. And it's not that I was wrong or that I disagree now. It's just that I'm over it. I just don't think pots are the way to go. I don't think Jelly Gouache is the way to go. You know, I've dealt with them for long enough now that I realize they do dry out. They do get moldy. They're hard to store. The pot gimmick, the jelly gimmick, like I, I just don't get it anymore. I would recommend, I've used Art Key and he, Maya Himi and I would recommend those too. I think they're fine and I think they have their merits. They are incredibly affordable, very, very cheap and still perform really well. So if you're looking for something really cheap, really easy, but it still will look really good and form well, Jelly Gouache is a definitely a safe bet. It's just not convenient. <laughs> Just like get tubes. Those are my gouache recommendations. All of those are things that I would genuinely recommend that you know work well and look look good. So, so when it comes to acrylics, I'll be honest, I don't have any favorite brands. I have things that I stick to, but it's just because they are what's in front of me. I couldn't really tell you the difference between brands or why one is better than the other. I generally just stick to if you if you don't have a Michaels near you, it's a craft store basically. They have paint sections and then they'll split it up between like level one, two, and three, beginner, intermediate, professional. I'll just stick to the things that are in level threes. So like, I'll just gravitate to those sections and just pick the things that aren't stupid expensive. However, I do have almost exclusively these three brands, which are Winsor & Newton. I do like Winsor & Newton as a brand. Like
like just across the board. I like Winsor Newton. Um, I also have Liquitex and Grumbacher. Another Grumbacher is another thing that I have multiple things of and I do like Grumbacher. I think moving forward, I'll probably be going more towards Liquitex. I think frankly, just because I like the packaging best, they are easier to store. Although now that I'm thinking about it, they might be harder to squeeze out of. These are easier to like get everything out of it. But yeah, I truly have no preference between those brands. I, I don't know any performance differences. That's what I stick to. I tend to find the most performance difference between pigments, not brands. So like, I don't have any brand loyalty on, on paints. Now moving on to oil paints, keep in mind that I have very little experience with oil paints and I have very little knowledge on them. That box, this blue box, this vintage vanity box is filled with all my oil paints. Almost all of them came from my great uncle. They're almost all hand-me-downs. I have bought maybe five of my own tubes. So I don't know much about buying oil paints. I don't know much about what makes a good oil paint. I just know the brands that I tend to have the most of. I have the Blick brand. I think this is just a safe option. I think they're generally a little bit cheaper and I trust when I was first buying my own, I bought Blick. My great uncle has a lot of Winsor Newton Winton oil colors. I don't know what that is, but he had a lot of them. I also have other Winsor & Newton um, mixables. This is a gold. I haven't gotten to try this out yet. I'm very excited to, but I do have a couple of just regular generic Winsor & Newton ones and they've worked fine. And then I also have quite a few Grumbachers. I do like the Grumbacher ones, but again, I couldn't really tell you the performance difference between any of these brands. I have what I have. All right, we're moving into the tail end of this. We're gonna talk very briefly about brushes. I've said this so many times. I don't really have, I don't have a technical education. I have very little like formal training. Um, I know very little about art and art supplies. Most of what I do is just osmosis, baby. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is I'm not picky about brushes. I just kind of use what I use and I don't know what makes a good brush. And frankly, you don't need to bother trying to tell me. I just do what I do. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, not my problem. So these brush recommendations are just things that I found work really, like I think they're pretty, they feel pretty. I have a set of etcher brushes that they sent me and I really like the way they feel. I like the sizes and I like the bristles, the hairs. I also have, I think two Holbein brushes. They're called, they're, they have brand ambassador on them. I don't know if that's me or if that's the brand, like, I don't know, but they are absolutely gorgeous. They feel so wonderful. And I would like more of these brushes. They are yummy. I also have a set of Meaden brushes. Lately, these have been my go-tos. The bristles are incredibly soft. The tips are so nice. Again, great variety and shapes. Been a go-to, I like them. And then my go-to brushes that I buy are, they're at Michael's and they're clear. I don't know what the brand is. They're incredibly cheap. They don't last super long. Long, but I don't feel bad about beating them up. When it comes to brushes, I tend to work in smaller sizes. I don't know sizing, like what it actually, what size it actually is, but I tend to like round tips and square tips. I don't really go for the funky shaped stuff, but I usually use a few square and a few round to get a piece done. Finally, a few miscellaneous things. Ecoline brush pens. These are ink pens. I bought these forever ago because I had this idea that I was gonna do, like I, there was, I don't even remember who it was, but someone was like, here's all my supplies that I use for Inktober. And they mentioned these and I was like, oh, I have to have them. I don't know why. To this day, I'm kind of mad that I have a collection of these, but they do come in handy every once in a while. They're like nothing that I would frankly recommend as like a staple, but every once in a while, I'm glad I have these. And that is because they don't bleed through my paper and my sketchbook. So if I have something that I would really like to color in, but I don't wanna use something like colored pencils, I can use these and they don't bleed through to the other side. And then I'm glad I have them around. I have these Marabu art crayons. Again, Michael's, I don't really know what they actually are. They go on so nicely. I have a gold and a silver and the metallics, gorgeous. So pretty, but I also don't use them a lot. They're usually just for scribbling for fun stuff. I have a set of Ohu acrylic markers. These work really well. I like them. I recommend them. They're good. I also have a small collection of generic brand acrylic, thick, chunky acrylic markers. These I don't actually recommend, but they are a staple. I don't remember where I got them. I don't know how I've collected so many over the years. I have probably like 10. And honestly, they're actually not good. <laughs> they, they, the nibs fall apart all the time. Um, they are constantly either blowing up or drying out. They're really annoying, but they're the only ones that I have and I need them. I need acrylic markers. And then we have um, my Krylon Worksable Fixative. People ask all the time what I spray my stuff with to keep it from smudging. This is what I use. Anything that could smudge or transfer, I spray this on it and then it is fine. It smells disgusting, but the smell goes away after like 30 minutes, so it's fine. Finally, let me mention my digital stuff. I currently use Photoshop for all of my digital work and then I have a Wacom One tablet. I love the Wacom tablet. It works really well, it's a great size. 
couldn't recommend it more. I really, really like it. I used to use a program called Metabang. I don't even know if it's still around. It was free back, way back in the day. And I really liked it. In fact, there were some features that I preferred over Photoshop. Had great brush packs. Um, it was a really good program. So if it's still out there and if it's still free and you're looking for a free digital software, I would recommend that one. But nowadays I use Photoshop and I really like it. There we go. That is a complete tour of most of my art supplies that I use on a regular basis, that are my favorites, that I consider a staple. Like I said, anything that I can find a link to will be linked in a, link, in a, in a Google Doc, which will be linked down below. And I will also make sure to tag any specific affiliate links so you know which ones those are so I don't accidentally steal from you. And I will also have the affiliate links kind of on top in the description box down here in case you want to use those first. But that's it. This was actually really fun. I, I like looking at art supplies, so I had a good time. I'm not looking forward to cleaning this up, but you know, I make sacrifices for you. It's whatever. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, the whole shebang, you know what to do. If you're having a wonderful holiday season, um, let me know what you're doing to celebrate if you're doing anything at all. I gotta go clean up, so I'll see you next time. Go watch a movie, give someone a hug, and go do some art. Bye. <laughs> see you later. Talk to you later.